This is Josiah Plays Sunless Skies. All right, I'm at Port Prosper and I'm checking it out. The narrow streets of Port Prosper huddle in the shadow of a great crag. Bunting festoons the walkways. Banners display the stony features of her enduring majesty. I love the word festoons. One of my favorites. Not as good as trundles, but... Wealthy West Enders strut by, exchanging polite greetings and veiled gossip. Meanwhile, sooty East End workers file to the hour-refining factories. Healing posters promise fresh, wholesome lives in the reach to new arrivals. But many of the posters are years old. More newcomers arrive at Fort, Port Prosper than ever leave. I could go to a private meeting at the Windward Company. I could go to a parade. I could go to the amenable host's identity. I could. Sir, I need to do that. That's my quest. I could. Rec oh, I could recruit another officer. Oh, and I could get a port report. So many good things to do here. All right, let's get the port report first. Very little happens on Port Prosper, but someone might take an interest. The factories continue to belch out smoke, while over the bridge, hopeful crowds... Oh, I'm supposed to be saying this in the, in the voice of my character, right? The factories continue to belch out smoke, while over the bridge, hopeful crowds gather outside the Admiral Nelson. Lovers can be seen strolling arm in arm along the promenade, at a respectable distance from their chaperones. There was a brief protest outside the Windward Company factory, swiftly quelled. The scones at the Nelson were as good as ever, though the piquancy of the jam was less than might be desired. You have a port report for Prosper. Alright, now let's get this officer, the clay conductor. Oh, is he a clay man? I think he is a clay man. Remember the clay man from... Goodness gracious, Captain. He lumbers towards your locomotive. What a fine engine. First officer, three hearts, one iron, and another affiliation with, ac with academia, basically. Academe. Shakes your hand firmly. It is like being grasped by an avalanche. All aboard, then. I simply cannot thank you enough for the opportunity, Captain. I've got the clay conductor. So my officers are starting to fill out now. Oh, I can talk to him! Oh, this content will come in a future build. Okay. I could see his face up close. See, the other ones, when I click on them, nothing happens. But when I click on him, he looks awesome. So, they don't have the officer conversations in yet, basically. No, 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 wrong, wrong button. Let's be still time. Yeah, okay. So I've recruited... I like that I don't have to pay any of these officers anything either. They've all just joined me for free, which is rad. I actually have a ton of supplies and... Yeah, look, my hold is almost entirely full. 9 out of 10. Okay. Private meeting, parade... Okay, let's do the quest for the amenable hosts now. The house might still be here. It had purple walls, which would surely stand out. If not, you have the locket. Not a soul in Port Prosper recognizes the locket. Who's that, then? Does he still wear his hair like that? Fancy! Become familiar refrains. More promising is the house you saw painted in the amenable host's chamber. You locate several candidates, all apparently repainted over the last couple of years, but one is in the exact location near the station as depicted in the host's painting. Nobody seems to remember who owned it or why, but apparently it had once been associated with the Parlor of Virtue, not long after Port Prosper's foundation. 
you've discovered you've uncovered nothing definitively conclusive here you may return to the amenable host or look elsewhere well we're gonna look elsewhere obviously um all right i want to go to a parade next it is apparently the feast of the red saint this sounds like more cannibalism shit Procession of the Red Saint. Gaudy banners fly over the painted rooftops of Port Prosper. The smog of the East End is hidden away by giant posters displaying dragons in varying degrees of vivisection. What? Dragons being vivisected is what's on the posters? What the fuck kind of fucked up posters are these? The cramped streets are clogged with people. Wealthy West Enders promenade about the amusements while impoverished East Enders work the stalls and huddle by the chestnut fires for warmth. Chapel of Lights, Chapel of... Yeah, I'm thinking of the Chapel of Lights here. A painted dragon pursued by knights is chased through the crowds to a chorus of Ho! The Riding! I can fraternize with everyone. I can mingle with the poor or the rich. The hats, the crinoline, the starch that gleams on the mustaches, you're sure you'll fit right in. But I'm a street urchin, so I wouldn't really fit in with those people. Mingle with the East Enders. Lurking in the tents or manning the stalls in the side streets or scowling at the passing gentry, they see more your level. Or I can fraternize with everyone. Skyfarers are not limited by the rigid social structures of Port Prosper, though neither are they beloved for it. I think I'm going to go with number three here. I'm kind of trying to follow a middle road here for now. You are treated as a curiosity and viewed from all sides with suspicion. Still, you find yourself in conversation with an elderly colonel who has retired to Port Prosper. A bulwark of sanity, he calls it. A line in the sand against all the stuff out there. He introduces you to one of the riders in the procession, who takes you on a tour of the carnival. You converse with chestnut sellers and flower arrangers, drink in the outdoor pubs, and dance with several of the vaudeville players. At the end of the day, you've learnt many names and faces. Saint-Chapelle. That was the name of that church, the cathedral. That was so awesome with the stained glass. Saint Chapelle. I think it was spelled Chapelle basically like the same way that Dave Chappelle spells his name. But I could be wrong. That place was rad. Um At the end of the day you've learnt many names and faces and even acquired a few calling cards. Tolerated by the prosperous West Enders, tolerated by the impoverished East Enders, snow swirls around Port Prosper and settles on Mole's table. Fur coated West Enders dash through the drifts. Oh, there's something else I can go to the Lammas Fair. I can do that because it's date 15. And because I've already been to the other thing. Celebration of the bounty and fortune of Port Prosper. There is an elderly lady, whispers surreptitiously, likely to be Bridge. Um, bridge. My grandmother was super into Bridge. Ran a Bridge ring. The Lammas Fair. All the sights and sounds of a day at the fair in London. Genuine rubbery lumps sold by the cartful. Icons of mayors pass from Dick Whittington to Sinning Jenny. <gasps> okay, that's a thing that actually happened in Fallen London, the the browser game. They actually had a they had an election, and I played I played during this time. They had an election, and there were all these different things you could do in the game to help your candidate. There was three different candidates that were available, and you could pick which one you supported. And there were all these things you could do in the game to build support for your candidate. And the one that won 
over a certain period of time was the one that actually got made the mayor. And Sinning Jenny is the one who won, and that was actually the candidate that I supported. And I worked very hard to support Sinning Jenny's campaign, and she won. So then that's what they're making a reference to here. That's cool. Mayors pass from Dick Whittington to Sinning Jenny, Sinning Jenny line the streets. A Ferris wheel offers paying customers the chance to survey the heights of Port Prosper. Side stalls speckle the side streets, manned by gamblers and mountebanks. The main streets offer popular games and diversions, watched over by a number of burly guards from the factories. Oh, I can do a lot of things. Oh, I, not cool enough to run with the East Enders. I'm not cool enough to do the West Ender thing either. Maybe I would have been if I would have picked one or the other at the at the um other thing. <clears throat> I can delve into the side stalls, who knows what's lurking in the shadows. That's a 62% chance of mirrors. Okay, I'm terrible at mirrors. Or I can stick to the main stalls. There are more respectable pleasures to be experienced. And that's 100% or 81% hearts. I think I got to go with the hearts because the other one I'm going to probably fail. Success. Oh, and it makes a nice little sound effect. Carnival Barkers accost you with promises of wonderful kaleidoscopes that will show you visions of life on the frontier. Old sky captains have been wheeled out to tell tall tales of life out in the reach. Daring escapes predominate. Their reasons for retiring in Port Prosper are left undisclosed. Several acquaintances catch up with you by the bridge and you promenade together, taking in the sights and sounds of the main stalls while avoiding the smells from the side streets. Oh, the West Enders like me more now. It's not really what I was going for, but it's okay. Cheers go up from house to height, where a team of patriotic mountaineers have scaled the cliff and unveiled the Union Jack. And the only thing left to do here now is go to the private meeting at the Windward Company. A message was waiting with the station master. The envelope is crisp as a new banknote. The handwriting gilded and impossibly neat. Oh, look at this motherfucker. The parsimonious chairman's offices. The offices of the Windward Company on Port Prosper are elegantly appointed, if antiquated. Paintings of old London and the Z adorn the walls. The parsimonious chairman sits behind his mahogany desk, a decanter of brandy at his left hand, and a series of neatly stacked reports at his right. A fire has been lit in the cavernous hearth. It is too warm. Let's listen to the parsimonious chairman's offer. A note came from him. He promised an opportunity for profit. He pours the brandy into two glasses. He produces a ruler from his desk to measure the amounts and adjusts accordingly. When he is, at last, satisfied, he hands you a glass. To business! When he smiles, he reveals the extensive damage to his teeth. I was a pugilist back in London. A young man's game. He invites you to join him by the window, where starlight dazzles the sloping streets of Prosper. A place like this is only kept safe by toil, you understand? The pioneers who built it, the politicians who funded it, and the people who defend it from... His lip curls. The tackities. Those who toil in such labor are rewarded. Proof is required, of course. Nameplates will do. We keep lists of their engines. He looks familiar to someone, but I can't quite remember who. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Knox. I haven't seen Jumanji. Will I hunt tackety locomotives and provide their nameplates for the sanctimonious or parsimonious chairman? Are you serious? He wants me to hunt down their ships and destroy them? 
Ah, oh, I can't do that. Can't do that. I will do no such thing. Parsimonious chairman sighs like a man used to disappointment. He allows you to finish your brandy and even makes a few polite comments on the provenance. Eventually, he rings a little bell and his secretary appears to escort you out. My door, he says, is always open. He declined his offer, but his door is always open. Look, if I go out there and tackety dudes are attacking me, then fine. I'll go on the warpath and do this for him. But I'm not just going to go start fucking randomly privateering it up on some innocent tackety ships that aren't doing anything to me. And that's it for now. Um, and I don't need to buy supplies because I'm all filled up. I'm feeling good. Birds flying high. You know how I feel. Alright, I need to find... Just the Fulbright factory. I need to find... I'm looking to see if I can discover any more places here by sailing next to them. Clang, clang. Running into shit with my hoe. Maul's ta oh, that's what Maul's table is. It's basically a great big rock. Oh, I need to go back to town. To the main town, because look at my terror. I feel like I need to go get my terror reset before I switch over to the next level. House to height. I get experience for every one of these little things I discover. The Charterless Gulf. I really want to find out what happens at the next level up. So, let's talk about possibilities here. I need to head back to New Winchester. Before my terror gets too high. Isn't there a button for cruise control? Let's see. Okay. There we go. I have cruise control on now. So I don't have to keep holding down W like you normally have to do. So I'm just gonna There doesn't seem to go up super fast though, at least not in this area. There's probably areas that are way more terrifying. Like here's what I'm guessing is the case. I'm guessing that the reach is the easy area. Where the creatures aren't very dangerous and you don't get attacked that much and you don't gain terror that badly. And then I'm guessing you go to these other areas and shit's a lot harder. And that's when you start getting reamed. That's what I'm guessing. What is up, Abyssal Zombie? Yeah, this is this is Skies of Sea. Yeah. Let's send the let's send this little guy out. The bat is happy to have found nothing of interest. That's probably why the game seems a lot less daunting and and oppressive and difficult in the beginning than Sunless Sea did. Because Sunless Sea was pretty dangerous and terrifying right out the gate. And this is like... more forgiving in the starter area, I think. Which I think is a good idea. I think that's a good change. 
Because it was tough to get started in some of the I'm going to send out another scout. Nothing of interest. Well, that's bullshit. I'm driving around in a space train. A space train. Yeah, even the easy monsters would whoop your ass in the beginning. Like, you could kill them. A distant clamor of engine yards and accretion of smog on the windows. You could kill them, but they'd hurt you. And a lot of the creatures in this probably still will as well, but... Where's the actual... Oh, there it is. I need to get there before my terror gets to be a problem. Winchester. There's the actual dock. There we go. My terror went down to nothing. Thank you. Alright, now that I'm back here... thing is I should get an expansive word group plus three hold would be so nice but uh, let's wait till I have more money see so I could buy some stained glass for 90 wait I could buy bronze word too aren't those the two things I needed to repair the to repair the clock in Port Prosper? Port Prosper? Didn't I need bronze wood and stained glass? Because if I could just buy them both here and then go straight back up there, it could be a nice profitable thing to do. Company house. So I could give my port reports here. To the Windward Company. Or I could give my port reports here to the Indurate Veteran. So I have to decide who to give my port reports. Do you have hold space, otherwise it might be cheaper. Well, it might be cheaper at a different port, but I have no idea where those ports are. So I mean, I could be sailing around for hours and hours before I discover the places where, you know, All right, while we're here, 20 sovereigns to fully repair my hull. 10 hull for 50. That's five sovereigns per hull. Oh, and this is also five sovereigns per hull. Okay. Return a settler. No, I don't want to return a settler. This isn't where they go. All right, let's look for the amenable host's identity. Titan of industry? Those are rare outside of Albion. The initial search is fruitless. People giggle at the antiquated fashion on display in the daguerreotype, the tilt of the jaw, the unfortunate arrangement of hair. But the proprietor of the round table seems to recognize the face. Oh yes, right sod he was. He holds the locket up to catch the falling starlight through the round window in the roof. Wanted to open a factory here a few years back. Something went wrong, and there was a workers' revolt. 
Flags of the trade, unionists could be seen from here to the sanatorium. Not been seen since. Nothing conclusive here, so I need to go to the other place. I need to go... Where was the other place? Was it Port Avon? Yeah, there were three places. We've now been to two of the places. Unfortunately, it's not telling me where the third place is. I'm trying to remember if it was Port Avon. Because we already have to deliver a settler to Port Avon, and it looks like we can get Bronzewood at Port Avon, maybe cheaper. So that should be the place I try to find next. The only problem is there's no possible way to try to find a certain place since I haven't the slightest idea which direction it would be in. So, like, yeah, I want to find Port Avon next, but it's a completely random chance of the, if the direction I go is the direction that it's in, you know what I mean? Alright, New Winchester... Journal, perhaps not. I don't want to do any of those things. I have to decide what to do with my port reports. Should I give them to London or to the assembly, the Tacketys? I think I like the Tacketys more, so I'm going to give them to them. I'm going to deliver my port reports to the Indurate veteran. Her tireless exertions during the blockade earned her both a seat on the assembly and enemies in London. She likes to keep abreast of events. She listens with a scowl. Well, I'd rather know than not, I suppose. Thank you for bringing this to me, rather than the bloody stovepipes. I'll arrange a gratuity. I have two favor with the Tacketys. I got fuel supplies and 40 sovereigns. Very nice. So I don't have to buy fuel and supplies again. Hold is 8 out of 10. In chat with her. She already said this. All manner of buggeration. Okay, so you can get stuff with this favor. You turn in more port reports to her, you get favor with these people, and you can turn it in for things like savage secrets, otherworldly artifacts, or to affect the balance of power. And then if I went to the other place instead, I could get favor with them, and I could trade it in for salon stewed gossip, ministry stamp permits, or the balance of power. Okay, so when I need these various things, I'll know that this is at least one way that I could get them. I'm going to go ahead and repair my hall. Mechanics take pride in their work. Your newly returned engine is not just fully repaired, it gleams. So it's fully repaired. That only cost me 20. I've got quite a bit of money now. Well, not quite a bit, really, but some. One thing that I wish the UI had was when you're on one of these stores, there should be a thing somewhere that tells you how much money you have, right? I mean, that that just makes sense. They could have a, just one little tiny line up here at the top that says how much money you have. Or it could be over here, or it could, it could be somewhere. But there should be a thing telling me how much money I have without having to, like, click on this to see that I have 280. Well, you could copy your point. Yeah, couldn't I write them twice <laughs> on two different pieces of paper and then... See, I could spend 240 right now to get the stained glass and bronze wood and take it back up there. Not a bad idea. It's most of my money, but I'm guessing 
that I'll get, you know, a nice chunk of change for doing it. I might, like, double my money or something. And I have just enough room in my hold. If I could find Port Avon first, it would probably be better. But again, like I said, I haven't the slightest clue of which direction to go to find Port Avon. So I could just end up going around aimlessly for who knows how long. So it seems logical to do this now. Oh, maybe I can get another... No, I can't get another crew, or I can't get another officer here. Oh, I do want an expansive wardrobe, but I can't afford it yet. I don't need to buy any fuel and supplies because I'm all loaded up. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to buy stained glass and a bronze wood. And now my hold contains those. So I should be able to go now. Damn it! Just repaired my hull! And I've already crashed into some shit and taken a point off my hull. I mean, every time I take a point off my hull, that's five sovereigns I'm spending. I'm trying to discover some more stuff. No, 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 no! Okay, that time I didn't. That time I did. Damn it! I'm spending a lot of money running into stuff here. It's really difficult steering close to these islands without hitting them. Close enough to discover something without... I mean, I'm sure I get used to it more as I played. Alright, I think I need to just go... ...back to Port Prosper and make a bunch of money. Now, I wonder if I can stop by Magdalene's and get another port report. Your bridge windows fog with recent steam trails. This place is well frequented. So can I get another port report is the question. Damn it! That's another five sovereigns! I can. Alright. Let's just do that, and then go.
I need like an auto dock. When I get close to the thing, I need them to like guide me into the dock because it's not freaking easy to get in there without smashing face first. It's also kind of hard to tell if a thing is, like, on my level or beneath me. to the next area. <clears throat> What's this? Another thing that's weird is you can't get information on what another ship or creature is, like what it's called. They didn't seem to want to attack me, so whatever. Bridges clock chimes twice quickly, it's close to the Isambard line. Blast it and take their name plate. anything I can discover over here. harder to steer the ship in this than it is in than it is in Sunless Sea. Alright, I need to go back down in here and dock. See if I can get into the dock this time without it's really fucking hard I'm telling you it is not easy to steer in there if you're going at any any kind of speed all right we made it Bigger range of discovery is what I would want, yeah. I can get a port report here. I've got what I need for the clock tower. A cheer from the scaffolding, the foreman beams. An angel, bring in gifts. Actually, you point out, you'll be needing payment. Oh! <gasps> 
800 sovereigns. Oh my god. That's so much more than I thought I was going to get. Progress in Port Prosper. You are paid extremely well for the delivery, and the foreman shakes you warmly by the hand. Won't take us no time now, he says with a grin. Maybe we should name the damn clock after you, eh? Albert Clock. 800 sovereigns. Amazing. Alright, I'm fucking rich now. I have 840 sovereigns. Well, let's buy one supplies. See, let me look at my hold. Yeah, let's buy one supplies and one fuel. And I'm still sitting on 780 sovereigns. I should have checked and seen how much dried tea sells for back in. It's sort of weird about the terror thing, though. Does terror only resets when you go to... Because it looks like Port Prosper is a pretty major town, so... I don't know why Port Prosper doesn't reset your terror. Returning to a major hub, it says. So, I guess this doesn't count as a major hub. Maybe there's only one major hub per circle. At least this one's conveniently in the center. Well, where should I go, guys? I'm going to kind of go over this way and see if I can find anything. To the west. Try to get out here further and then send the scout out. Your bat returns. Oh, you bribed with me to see some. Okay, let's go there. Maybe if we're really lucky, that's Port Avon. Dance in the distance. Bright and brief as dandelion seed sliding through a sunbeam. Oh, this might be that plant place they were talking about. The flower city or whatever. Oh, I guess it doesn't really look that flowery though. How yeah, these are all like linked together by, I don't know, vines or something. Damn it! I'm fucking up my hull constantly. Oh, here's a place. Is 
Lead Beater and Stain Rod's Nature Reserve. Alright, well, we found a cool place. Lots, lots of story places. Let's look at the shops. Skyfaring Supplier. 20 and 40, same as always. Researcher's Friend. Wait, what's it say? An austere shop near the station. Designed to operate as efficiently as possible so that captains may free up space at the station as swiftly as they can. The Researcher's Friend. A little shack which the researchers of Leadbeater and Stainrod used to declutter their cabins and barter for the ne necessaries. Sell tea here for 60. Caged catch. Exotic. Contained. Furious. So I don't know if any of these things are cheaper than they are in... I haven't been paying attention to the prices of things. Except for fuel and supplies. Now let's go to the loading bay. Leadbeater and Stainrod is an elderly London company, the custodians of the Empire's first supernal nature reserve. To find work with them, head for Capabilities Cabins. If you'd rather enjoy the reserve, seek the gateway of Albert's Idol. St. Leadbeater and Stainrod Bay. This concrete bay is for loading and unloading locomotives. Nature reserve in space. This concrete bay is for loading and unloading locomotives. It disappoints tourists who expect to arrive at a scenic waterside. It mainly caters for the workers of the Leadbeater and Stainrod Company who come to collect goods from the laboratories here. Wait. For a few, it's the work provided by Leadbeater and Stainrod. For the rest, the reason is the same. They're drawn by the beauty of the reserve. Some are here with tourists from across the empire. Others are here to give their crews a respite. Others were simply passing by and couldn't resist stopping in. That's like me. First, your fellow captains would bring them out this way. Okay. Let's gather a port report. The reserve is a point of pride for the empire. The Leadbeater and Stainrod Nature Reserve is a national park, maintained at great expense by the company. Scores of researchers come here to study the nature of the reach. Many visitors come here too for a pleasant holiday. I now have a port report. Alright, let's go to Capabilities Cabin. Let's just go to Albert's Idol first. The Leadbeater and Stanrod Nature Reserve is an immense, untrodden hinterland of the Reach's unreasonably fecund flora and fauna. It is popular with London's more outdoorsy tourists. Into the reserve, the park is filled with birds and flowers, trees and woodland creatures, streams and bumbling insects, and other insidious dangers. Visitors are not allowed to venture too deeply into the reserve without an escort. Let's arrange to go on a tour. Park guests are forbidden from entering the deeper sections of the reserve alone. At the moment, we only have one who could show you around now, she says. I'm afraid he's our least popular, but he's the only one available. Just a moment, I'll fetch him. Some time later, she returns with a lean, humbly dressed man. His beard is long and wiry, and his smile reaches his eyes. The romantic ornithologist shakes your hand. This gentleman, the clerk says, is searching for the mythical bird that takes grains of time from the mother of mountains. He's wasted 10,000 sovereigns on this pointless search. 
The ornithologist maintains his smile and gestures toward the forest path. I'll be glad to tell you of the bird. But first, come. I've just found a new waterfall and I'd like to show someone. Romantic ornithologist's dream is now. I have one time search for the bird. I have tours through the reserve. I have 59 times the romantic ornithologist search for a new vista. Into the reserve. Let's make conversation with the ornithologist. If he's not hiking through the wilderness or camping beneath the bough of one of the great trees, he is sat alone in his watchtower searching for his bird. He offers a slight nod as you enter. Welcome, he. Let's ask about the bird. Researching a mythical bird, what is it and why? There are other birds I could study, of course, he says, shrugging. But that's not the point. This bird is holy. It's myth. The bird who takes a grain from the mountain we now ravage for time. Why does it do this? Where does it go? Have we disturbed its divinity? I must know. Let's ask about the reserve. How does he find the wilderness? He smiles like a child. It is my home, he says. My church. It's everything that makes me happy. Let's ask him about his fellow researchers. Is he on good terms with the other scientists? The ornithologist tilts his head from side to side. I get on better alone. It's not that I don't enjoy company, but... A reference to the shepherd boy? What shepherd boy, Knox? He scratches his beard. I think it's a difference in philosophy. They want to conquer nature and her secrets. I only want to be a confidant. You're a pal and a confidant. No. No Golden Girls song. Golden Girls song? Not allowed. Discuss aiding the ornithologist research. How can you help him discover this mythical bird? Rubs his chin. Well, there are a few ways you could help me out. He smokes his pipe as he looks out over the reserve. It's fluttering about somewhere, he says. One day, I'll prove it. You could give him 50 sovereigns. Perhaps he may buy better tracking equipment. I don't want to help him that badly right now. I could oblige a crewmate to be his helper. If he had another set of eyes searching for the bird, he might find it faster. I could give up a crewmate. That's not the most awful thing I can imagine. I could donate supplies to encourage the bird. A little snack might give it cause to land. That's a possibility. I could look for the bird. Where is it? You may search for the bird only once per captain. So now is not the time because I have a 0% chance of success. I could unload barrels of unseasoned hours, except I don't have any of those. I need five of them. I could share visions of heaven if I had four visions of the heavens. In the brothers grin, Grim, King asked how many seconds were in eternity. There's a mountain one hour deep into the earth, one hour up toward the sky, one hour long and one hour wide. A little bird comes to the mountain once every hundred years to sharpen its beak. And when this bird has worn away the whole mountain, the first second of eternity has passed. Oh. Cool. Well, let's give him a crewmate for now. 
<sighs> Gained 50 times search for the bird, new total 51. Lost one crew. The romantic ornithologist claps his hands and walks over to a chest of drawers. And they will be welcomed indeed. I'll make them most at home. Tell me. He says, opening one of the drawers and revealing a tremendous array of pipes. Do they smoke? Alright. You know, I have a lot of sovereigns. Fuck it, I'll give him 50. Perhaps he may buy better tracking equipment. The ornithologist cracks open a yellowing, well-marked catalog of optic lenses. I've a few pieces I've been considering, he says, puffing his pipe. This should be a great help. All right, I'm getting 50 of that tracking thing each time. Oh, look, I get it now. The more you do these things, the better your chance is for the look for the bird. So I should wait until I have a 100% chance and then do this, which means I just need to donate enough supplies. If he wants two supplies, that's 80 sovereigns. So it's dumb to give him supplies if you could just give him 50 more sovereigns. Then again, giving two supplies might give more than 50 bird, bird points or whatever. And I don't have these things. These might give even more. So you know what? Fuck it. I can buy... I can buy more supplies here, right? For the standard prices? Yeah, I can. So you know what? I am going to give him two supplies and see what I get out of it. I've already asked him all these things. Let's... Let's give him the supplies and see what happens. A little snack might give it cause to land. Oh, you're only losing... Oh, that's even cheaper than giving him money, then. The romantic ornithologist sniffs the stale bread and gives an appreciative sigh. Oh, crumble it finely, he says. I'm sure it'll enjoy the offering. Thank you. You get 50 bird points, and it only costs you 40 sovereigns worth of supplies. I wonder how much it costs to hire crewmates. I wonder if crewmate is cheaper than supplies. I haven't had to hire any crewmates yet, so... Now my chance is up to 48%. So what did I just gain? Like 16%? For my 50 bird points? So I could buy more supplies. I could do this right now if I want to. I could buy enough supplies and give him enough supplies to get this up to 100%, I think. But the question is, is it worth doing that right now? Or is this a thing I should come back and do later? I kind of feel like doing it now since I have so much money. I'm going to give him one more crew member. My search for the bird is 48. If I give him another crew member, I get 50 more bird points. And it takes me up to 62. That's 14% I got that time. Not going to get rid of any more crew right now. 62%. I only have one supplies. Let's buy four supplies. And then let's go back to Birdman. Sixty two per cent. Give him some more supplies. 78%. So that is 
More supplies. 96%. Okay, I'm feeling solid with this. Now watch. This will be some Blessing of Saito shit right here. I'm going to roll this with a 96% chance. And if I fucking failed on the 4% chance, I'm going to be so fucking pissed. <laughs> uh, this will officially be Blessing of Saito if I fail with a 4% chance to fail. Will I succeed? Will I fail? We'll find out in our next episode. That's going to do it for this one. But if you're watching the stream, don't go anywhere because I'm not done playing. If you're watching on YouTube, this episode is now over. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Sunless Skies.